Hello, Terracon4 here. Today, I am going to be making a tutorial that will hopefully teach you relatively well about how to make an auto-seeking turret. This relies on the Interact and Possession system, the Player Turret Controller, and the AI Turret Controller. Right now, it behaves like a normal turret, but when I tap Q... Let's see... Q the turret will now start automatically tracking at whatever target I am roughly pointing at. It'll automatically track and fire. So you can make a system like this that can be used for, say, a large series of point defense machine guns where you just want to point at the rough target that they're supposed to fire on. You have a whole bunch of them automatically firing. This way you can direct your targets. So this relies on the player turret controller, the AI turret controller, and the interacting possession system to hop into and out of it. You can also leave it turned on, or turning it off. Depending on how you set that up, that can be done in a variety of methods. So, in order to start with, let's go into content, and turret controller, blueprints, and let's grab one of the turret demos and we're gonna make a copy of this turret demo testy so over here I've got the already set up one but we're going to more or less go through the idea of making it new first of all swap active actor that's not going to be used anymore. If I project that with left click, we're going to change this. Free camera rotation, yeah, we can leave that. Camera inputs, we'll be leaving that. So, things we're going to want to change. First, we're going to want to add the AI turret controller. But we're not just going to want to add one, we're going to want to add two. The first one, we're just going to name two. Gun. And the second one will be our scouter. So, the default turret that we have here from the player turret has this little thing on top, a little optics. It spins much faster than the main turret. You might not have even realized it's there, but it demonstrates having multiple turrets in a single controller for various uses without actually firing anything. So, in this case, we're going to go down here to the construction aspect right off the bat, and set turret suffix to 2. So with this, the AI scouter is going to be using this little thing. But we want to be using that, so rotation speed, 0 and 0. Rotation limits, we don't want to instruct any limits or anything on this, we just want to set it to 0 rotation speeds. So now the AI turret controller is effectively using this, but it can't actually move it. Now always uh, let's see, weapon behaviors, we don't care about that. Safety is on, though, since we can cut down a lot on the extra tick events required if it doesn't, if it knows that it's not going to be doing anything involving firing projectiles. So, tag actors with a given tag prioritize closest. In this case, we'll just use the default target tag for the demonstration actors. And then, ignore self on target search, so it doesn't get obstructed by the rest of this actor in this case. Otherwise, we could have it in all specific components. Let's see. Only detect targets within a field of view, let's just say, 30. Now, this thing will only spot targets within that field of view. And now, we will want to go to the gun AI controller, and this thing is going to be making use of the main thing. But we don't necessarily want to always do that, so by default we're going to set it to is active, false. Now, target tags. We could add a tag, but we're not going to do it this time. We're going to go over the target acquisition method and use manually set turret target. So now it just gets manually set to whatever it is that we are going to give it. So safety is on. Nope. Projectile fire effect, let's just use a small explosion, and the projectile actor, CTE, fast firing projectile. 
So that's more or less what we'll be wanting for this. Accuracy, predictive fire, all these things we don't need to care too much about. But use vertical limits down. I don't remember we want to set this to the same that we were using on the turret controller. So up is 75, down is 12. Down, down is 12, up is 75, and nothing being cared about the other direction. As far as the rotation speed goes, 50-50, or was that horizontal is 120 and 55, okay. So, rotation speed, 120 and 55. But, and turret suffix is one, so it's still using the base one, turret one, barrel run, which is these big main parts. But the key part now is how we actually make this thing fire, since it's not by default active. Well, we're going to take the AI scouter turret controller, since this one will be looking for targets and is linked up to that little scouter. You could just use invisible cubes that don't actually happen to exist anywhere, just cubes, disable the collision, make them invisible, whatever, you don't need an actual mesh or anything. But in this case, we've got the optics, so we're using it. So get turret target, and create an event tick. Now, we're going to be taking this target and asking if it is valid. If it's valid, then that means we've got something spotted that we could shoot at. But first, we might want to add a little rule. Let's see. Only if, what should we call this? Um, auto aim on. So, only if auto aim is on will we continue doing this, and otherwise we just disable everything. So now here we'll want to add another one, calling it probably auto aim enable. So looking at the target, we're going to ask, is it valid? Assuming that it is valid, then we need to know Auto aim enabled will reference when the system is being active, and this is whether or not it can be active by manual player setting it. So, if we have a target that is valid on this thing, then is this already enabled? If true, then we wanna... we don't care. If false, though, we need to activate it. So, we'll get the AI turret controller gun and the player's turret controller. So, set is active, or get active, since we've got multiple turrets here. Get turret not active, set array element. So if it's not active, we'll disable it on top and leave it enabled on the bottom. Index zero, that'll link to the first turret. We want to keep the second one under our control. And then for the AI turret controller, set is active. We will enable or disable. So now if we have a valid target being passed to it, yeah. And if it is valid and the auto aim enabled is already going, we'll be, well, we'll get to that in a minute. So we'll need to actually pass on the target. So AI turret controller, the scouting one, and then we'll want to get the turret controller with the gun and set turret target. So if we actually activate this thing, we need it to know what target it's shooting at. Is the scouter found it? And also, if it's already active, we want it continuously to be updating this. So. We'll plug this in here, and loop over the top of this thing. So, here it 
is. If this is enabled, we do this, and if false, then we're going to want to go over to here, and if auto aim is enabled, we want to disable it. Should this be false? And now we're going to want to do a set, well, first, whatever this value is not, and then set auto aim on. And now we'll need to create a event. Let's just use Q. So when you press Q, you can turn this on and off. So with this, our basic auto aim stuff is more or less, let's see, if I do active, Mr. Reference there. Okay, so the auto aim stuff is more or less good. Should be, I say. So let's pull out this new demo one that we were making and auto possess. Right off the bat, let's just possess the player. So I can look around. I can't shoot. I didn't add that part yet, but I tap Q and it will start firing on its own. But I'm looking away and it doesn't seem to want to stop. Ah, right, that's the problem. I knew I was forgetting something. We need to actually adjust the value for auto aim enabled. By default, it's off, so here we'll have it enabled, and here we tell it that it's being disabled. There we go, that should work now. Okay, found the issue, turn not active. I had these two variables mixed up. Needs to be set true to the top and false on the bottom. Let's go up and say left mouse click. When you do this, we're going to get the gun and do a forced fire. But since we want this to be done on a timeline, well, to be quick, I'll just go over to the one I already made and show you here. Left mouse button, if smart fire active, that's what the variable I used that time. So we'll just copy this to speed this up a bit. So the idea is when you fire, if the auto aim thing is currently enabled, then you can't fire, it's busy firing. But if it's not enabled, then you can fire. Gate, start closed is false, so that is that you'll enter here, and then it will first fire whenever it can, force fire, and then getting the delay between shots value from the turret controller, we will have it wait that delay while having first closed the gate. So first you fire, then you close the gate, and then after that delay, it opens the gate to let you fire again. This means that you can potentially fire immediately after disabling this thing without having to wait for that between shots, but we're not going to bother going into that right now. That's correct. There we go. Auto firing enabled, and when it's released, we go back to manual control. And we can also manually fire. Tap Q. Release Q. Alright, so now there is the adding of the interaction.